The problem with Susan Sontag's article, at least in my opinion, is her inability to see, or at least write, about the good of photography. To me, I feel as if she has unfairly written about photography as if it has done something to personally offend her. She summarizes photography as an attempt to contact or lay claim about another reality. But this is not exactly how I see it. I believe photographs are more important than that. Although she makes an accurate claim that photography sometimes takes the place of reality, I feel as though it more often and vitally introduces us to reality. When we see photographs from our tourist friends of the Colosseum or Machu Picchu or the Taj Mahal, we more often than not exclaim, oh my gosh, I want to go there, and we start planning our next vacation to Rome or Peru or India. I've never seen a beautiful photograph of a location and said to myself, well now I don't have to go there because I saw a picture of it. Whether it is a photograph of the animals from an African safari, or the gorgeous one-of-a-kind Greek islands, photographs simply persuade me to want to adventure to those lands. Sontag wants to argue that photographs, like paintings and drawings, are only an interpretation of the world. But I would like to think that pure photos, that is, the ones that are not photoshopped or edited, give us a glimpse of what reality looks like. The photographer is able to create an angle, but the snapshot taken is real, not imagined, like a painting. But this is what I believe gives photographs such an amazing appeal. We see a photograph and want to go see the object of the photo for ourselves. For example, I had seen hundreds of pictures of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but I can tell you that there is no comparison between seeing these photographs and viewing the building in Italy in real life. In fact, I think viewing so many photographs gave me even more excitement at finally being able to see and climb the real deal. When speaking of photojournalism and political or social movements concerning photography, arguably the most famous example is Jacob Rees and his How the Other Half Lives book that I'm sure you have all studied in an American history class at some point. This is the first thing I thought of when reading Sontag's article, yet she only mentions his name and brushes his success away in a line or two, continuing with a nevertheless statement. Jacob Rees was a genius and changed the way people lived in New York City by photographs alone. His work has been an influence to so many since his time, and his photographs continue to be some of the most famous of all time. Last semester, I took a course called International Organizations and Social Justice. Much of the class was spent on looking at how non-government, non-profit organizations raised money. And many authors and people who knew the field of non-profits says the new term, poverty porn, is what gains donors and sponsors support. And although some people would prefer to pretend that intense poverty doesn't happen, Photographs demonstrate to us the need to pay attention. Talking about a problem and showing real photographs of the problem has a tremendous impact. And maybe many organizations say that a single photograph of one child is the most successful way to gain sponsors. People see that there is a problem, that there is this specific child out there that needs to be helped. And the photograph is the messenger. The photograph, instead of becoming a substitution for reality, opens our eyes to reality.